Hi, Penville Middle School. I'm, I'm so glad to be participating in your virtual career fair today. Uh, some of you may know who I am or um, recognize me, and some of you may just be thinking I look familiar, but you can't quite place me. Uh, well, my name is Mrs. Andrews, and yes, I am that Mrs. Andrews. I am married to your band director. Uh, but even if you do know who I am, most of you probably don't know what I do. So I'm excited to talk about that with you just a little bit. Um, and before I go on, I should say that yes, my name is Mrs. Andrews, but it's also Dr. Andrews. And no, I don't have, I'm not a medical doctor at all. Um, I have a PhD. So if you choose to go to a four-year university, you would get your bachelor's degree. So if you went to somewhere like Grand Valley or Hope or Western, you get your bachelor's degree. If you choose to go on for schooling after that, you go to grad school and you would get uh, your master's degree. And if you keep going on after that, you get your doctorate degree or your PhD. And that's what I did. So I went to college for a total of 10 years. So my PhD is in statistics from Western Michigan University, as is my master's degree. So a lot of people who go to grad school in statistics have a similar um, bachelor's degree, like statistics or data analysis or data science. Um, I actually have a bachelor's degree in secondary mathematics education, meaning I was certified to teach middle and high school math. And I actually was a high school teacher. I, I taught high school math for a year. Um, unfortunately, due to the budget cuts that were happening across the state at the time, um, my school had to let me go, as did a lot of schools across the state, and no one was hiring. So that's when I decided to go back to school. I went back for my master's degree and I decided to pursue my PhD at that time. Um, so what I do for my job is I'm what's called um, a faculty specialist, meaning I'm actually a professor at Western Michigan University. Um, for my specific job title and my responsibilities, my main responsibility is actually teaching. So I'm in charge of one of our intro courses, meaning it's um, like the first class in statistics that most of our students take. Um, I create materials for the lessons and homework and exams and all things like that. Um, and I also create materials for others to teach with because there's about 400 students that take this course in a semester. So imagine everyone in your school taking this class at the same time. Well, I can't teach 400 students at once. Uh, and our class sizes are usually about 30 to 40 students or so. Um, so I have others that teach the class. So I am also responsible for making materials for them to teach with. Um, I usually teach about two classes um, in person and then I teach one online. Classes um, are very different in college than they are in middle school. So for example, my specific class that I teach is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class meaning we meet for one hour on Mondays, one hour on Wednesdays, and one hour on Fridays. So I don't see my students at all on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now I mentioned that I prepare, uh, prepare materials for others to teach with, and those are called teaching assistants or TAs. So our TAs are actually grad students. They're working on their master's degree or their PhD. And on top of creating materials for them to teach with, I'm responsible for all of the TAs in our department, not just the ones that teach my class, um, I'm responsible for all of them to make sure that they have all the tools they need to succeed in a classroom. For most of them, this is actually their first time ever teaching, um, but they are getting money to teach and they're getting a discount on tuition, so that's why it's a great position for them. Um, but regardless, we want them to be successful in front of the class and we want them to do well for their students. So I'm responsible for making sure that um, they have all the tools they need and that I'm there for guidance uh, with everything going on. So again, my primary responsibility is teaching. And yes, a responsibility of other professors is teaching as well. Um, however, most professors also have to engage in research. Now I did do research. Um, be because I have my PhD, I had to write what's called a dissertation. Basically, it's a long paper, um, and research is basically what you're doing for that. Um, but because of my teaching responsibilities, I'm not really engaging in research anymore, um, at least not at this time. At some point, I will. But most professors have to do that. Um, just to give you an idea of what I am have done, um, my research was actually on deciding which treatment a patient should get based on their personal characteristics. 
So for example, I'm gonna look at your age and your gender and your BMI, and I'm gonna be able to determine which treatment would be most effective for you. Now, like I said, I haven't, I'm not doing research at this time. I haven't put anything out in a couple years. I do have a couple of publications out there, uh, but I haven't had any come out in a year or two. Um, so I reached out to some of my colleagues at Western Michigan University and asked them about their research and what might be interesting to you guys and if they'd be willing to share it. So interestingly, Dr. Zui Noh's research is similar to mine. He's also deciding which treatment a patient should get based on their personal characteristics, but he's using a different uh, approach and different analysis. So that's really cool that we're doing the same thing, but we have a different approach to it. Uh, Dr. Jeff Terpstra worked with a group of researchers um, from a variety of backgrounds uh, that were interested in virtual environments for learning. Dr. Magdalena Bugai actually has worked on a couple of really interesting projects. So one was with a group of archaeologists who wanted to find a way to determine the sex of a person, or rather their ashes, uh, based on the, some ancient grave, uh, buried in some ancient grave, based on the objects they're buried with. Uh, rather than performing the expensive exam for the pieces of bones that were burned. So instead of performing this exam, can we look at what they're buried with and determine their sex based on those items? Um, she also did a project where she was determining how many fire trucks a small city needed to have so they can be self-sufficient in case of fires with a very high chance. And have any of you ever used the face aging app like on social media like uh, Facebook? Well, Dr. Hoon Bin Kong didn't necessarily work on that. She didn't work directly on that app, um, but she did work on how your gender, your age, your BMI, and how your genetic ancestry affects the shape of your face. So those are just a few examples of research that's being conducted. Um, our, our department is, has a lot of new young people that are advancing the field, and it's really great to see. Uh, now, being a professor isn't your only option as a statistician if you were to get your master's or your PhD. You don't have to be a professor. Um, you can work in industry, meaning basically you're going to go work for a company. So there are a lot of different things you can do. So for example, when you watch Netflix, um, you have that recommended option, right? It's looking at shows that are recommended or TV, TV shows or movies that are recommended for you. Well, how do they do that? Well, there's a um, algorithm that's developed by statisticians and they are making recommendations based on what people with similar interests to you are watching. So they may say, well, you're watching this show and this person also watched this show and they then watched this next show after that. So they're making recommendations based on that. And Google does something similar with their advertising, right? They're looking at what shows um, you watch. I don't know if any of you have ever had um, like I, I search something online or I go to a store and the next thing I know, I'm getting tons of ads for it. It's kind of that same idea. Now with the coronavirus going on, uh, that's obviously very pertinent right now, thus why we have a virtual career fair, uh, you may wonder how many new cases there's gonna be in your area in the next month. Well, statisticians can actually answer that or predict it. So they work on predicting the future number of cases for a specific area based on several factors, such as the proximity to other hot regions, on the number of hospital beds that are available, and um, perhaps the composition of the vulnerable population. And the one that usually gets the most interest from people is sports statistics. So sports statisticians uh, can analyze which team composition um, and which strategies work best for a certain type of team, for example, if they're a defensive team. There's actually a 2011 movie uh, called Moneyball, which is about the Oakland Athletics general, baseball team general manager who used statistics to assemble a competitive team for their 2002 season. And it's based on a nonfiction book of the same title. These are just some examples, and I've never worked in industry because I have always been a, a teacher or a professor. Um, so I recruited a few friends uh, to explain to you what they do for their jobs as a statistician. Hi, my name is Liz Ortiz, and I just recently graduated from Grand Valley State University with a double major in math and statistics and a minor in data science. I plan to work at Auto Owners Insurance as a software developer where I'll be coding for most of my job. Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Atticott. I'm a graduate from Western Michigan University. Uh, I, after graduating, I moved down to South Carolina 
and now I'm working for a company that handles Medicare claims. So what I do with math is I make sure that everybody's grandparents um, have access to the medical supplies that they need, um, specifically durable medical equipment, so things like diabetic test strips or um, your hospital beds or anything of that nature that's supposed to last a long time. Um, what we do is we run statistical models to make sure that everybody that um, needs these types of access or that they're distributed evenly across the United States. That way, um, people that live in rural locations, such as um, some parts of Ohio and Michigan, um, that they still have access to this, even though they don't live in a, a central city. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So keep doing math. Hi everyone, my name's Abby and I do pricing analytics for grocery stores. The next time you go to the grocery store, take a moment to look at what is the size of the food that's available and where is it priced? And also, where is it in the store? Go from grocery store to grocery store and ask yourself these same questions. And then the next time you stop at a convenience store or a gas station or even a drugstore, ask yourself the same questions you may notice that there are different sizes that are offered at different price points. Well, that's because there's a lot of analytics that go on to make sure that the right food size and the right food form is available at the right location and priced at the correct price for the shopper. That's my job and that's how I use analytics. I hope this gives you some insight into what I do and what said decisions do. It is a huge growing field that I really recommend people look into. So according to US News, the employment rate for said decisions is 97.2%, so very high, and it's number one for, for best business jobs. Um, and the Bureau of Labor Statistics projects a 30% employment growth for statisticians between 2018 and 2028. So huge growth, lots of opportunity because we're now focusing on using computers, which means we can have more data. Um, so definitely a great field to look into. You can uh, visit our department website for Western at www www.wmich.edu slash statistics if you want to look into anything anymore. Again, that's www.wmich.edu slash statistics, S-T-A-T-I-S-T-I-C-S. -I -I uh, thank you for watching this video and I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and that you have a great summer. Go Blackhawks!